Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Let me just give you off to Bareface Sahar and she's gonna discuss to you what today's video is gonna be. Off to you, Bareface Sahar. I'm really proud of myself. I have been uploading pretty consistently. I hope this streak does not end. I'm gonna be showing you what I do on the daily every morning before I go to work, what makeup routine I have, and what fragrances I like to spray that help me feel like a powerful woman with a messy top bun. <laughs> so if you watch my morning skincare routine, which I'll be linking up here, it shows what I do every single day before I put my makeup on. So one of the last steps in my video was SPF, so I already put this on. So we can just proceed with the makeup. Right now, I'm breaking out around my mouth and chin area, and I'm using Differin, which in turn makes me very dry on that area. So sometimes I have really dry patches and dry skin. And so to combat that, I like to use a primer that's very hydrating. And my favorite by far is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. I love this. As you can see, I'm almost done with it. It's the only primer that I've ever felt that actually does something. They do have a niacinamide one, but I have niacinamide in my skincare, and so I don't really find that I need that. I like to concentrate the primer around the areas of my face that have those dry patches. Now for the forehead and everywhere else, I do like to play around with primers. Right now I'm playing around with the Indeed Labs Nano Blur. This primer is pretty good. It's actually kind of tacky as well, I noticed. And I do see a little bit of a difference with the longevity of my foundation on my forehead because that's where I mainly focus it on. So I'm just going to be putting a little bit of this on my forehead and sometimes I'd also put it on my nose area and my cheek area. Every where, where I did not put that e.l.f. primer. So basically e.l.f. primer is down here because it addresses the dry patches in my skin from the Differin that I use to spot treat. And the other primer, like the Nano Blur, is on the top because that's where I get oily most. Okay, next what I do is I put my favorite foundation. This is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. I am the shade 100 Light Neutral. I do love this foundation. I do one pump. Usually one pump is enough for me. For every day, I don't like to go full glam. I just want to cover some spots, even out my skin tone, and that's basically the general thing I want for the everyday kind of makeup. So the way I like to apply this is I just like to dot it around my face, and I like to concentrate it on the areas that have more hyperpigmentation. So usually I use a foundation brush to give me more coverage. I feel like beauty blenders and sponge applicators take away from the coverage. I have been really enjoying this brush by NYX. It's the number 37. It's just the perfect density, and it's at an angle angle for foundation. I like to pat my foundation into my face. I feel like that just gives me the best coverage overall and it's much quicker. Some foundations don't work well with damp sponges and the House Labs foundation seems to be working better with a dry sponge or a dry brush. I wear glasses on the daily and usually I would steer clear from that area where my glasses sit just so that throughout the day I don't have those glasses circles if you know what I mean. So you can tell my face is not fully covered. I like this kind of coverage. It makes my skin look more skin-like and it doesn't make me feel like I'm going anywhere fancy. And that's the foundation. Here's the thing. I don't do concealer every day. I just feel like it's not necessary for me. I don't really have a big problem with really dark under eyes and I'm comfortable with my under eyes circles so I skip the concealer step. Instead I use a moisturizer for my under eyes. So it is actually nighttime and I'm trying to drink my magnesium here in this little shake. Okay, the next step I do is brows. And I use this every single day. And I've gone through so many of these. This is the H&M Superfine Brow Liner. I love this so much. I usually buy the shade Espresso. It's just really affordable and H&M always has sales. I tried other products before. I tried the e.l.f. one. I tried the NYX one. The NYX one's great. The only thing is, it's really expensive. Have you noticed NYX is getting more and more expensive? Their eyeshadow palettes are almost $30. So with my everyday brows, I just like to follow the shape of my natural brow and fill a little bit. I don't like manipulating the shape too much. I just want a more natural look. So when I start drawing here, it kind of looks really harsh. So I try to brush that out just to give me a nice natural effect. Next, I go in with brow gel. And honestly, I don't really care so much what brow gel I use, but I do stick to these two. This is Thick It Stick It by NYX. And this is the Brow Glue by NYX as well. And they're both in the shade Taupe. I do like this one a little bit more. I just feel like it holds my brows a little bit more in place. And so we'll go in with that today. 
If you notice, my brow hairs are a little long. I don't trim them, but honestly, I like them that way. Next is eyeliner, but I don't do this on the daily. I only do it when I have a very cute outfit on or when I'm feeling a little bit extra on that day. Sometimes when there's an event at work, I would wear eyeliner, but I don't do this every single day. I just don't want to be one of those people who is associated by the eyeliner that she wears. And then one day she comes to work and not have eyeliner and people are like, there's something different about you. I have that kind of weird fear. Eyeliner makes me feel like powerful. It makes me feel beautiful and it makes me feel more confident but I don't do a big wing liner I just do a little bit of a flick on the edge because I don't want it to be so intense the eyeliner I like to use is brown because again I feel like it's less intense right now I'm using the NYX epic ink liner in brown I actually don't love this I feel like the physician's formula version is much better but in black this epic ink liner is the best so next step is mascara the mascara I really really love is this anti-gravity by Milani. I love this mascara, but it's almost dried out, so I need to get a new bottle. And for me to repurchase mascara says a lot. I have tried so many mascaras, and I feel like this one is really high up there. I don't like investing in mascara, like expensive ones, because they dry out so easily. And I feel like there's just so many nice ones in the drugstore that why do you have to spend so much money on an expensive tube of mascara? Unless, of course, it's one of your things, then do you. I do want to try some high-end ones, don't get me wrong. I want to try the Tower 28 one. I really want to try some Urban Decay ones. Okay, next step is blush. Recently, I have been loving this Flower Beauty powder blush. This is in the shade Warm Hibiscus. It is the winter time, but this shade is so beautiful. I, I love it. And for my brush, I love using the e.l.f. brushes. This is the ultimate blending brush. And I like to just concentrate that on the outside of my cheeks. Or is it the apple of my cheeks? I like this blush because it is not matte. And it's also not like super shimmery. And it does last throughout the day. Like at the end of the day, I still see the blush peeking through, which I love. My ultimate favorite blush in the summertime is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. I still use that and I did repurchase that because that's my favorite blush, but that's for summer. This is nice. It says warm hibiscus, but it's not too warm. So I feel like it's great for the winter time. Okay, and we're almost done. So in my morning routine video, I did mention that I like to put a lip balm underneath my lips to make sure it's hydrated. And I do like the Indeed Labs for that. It just helps my lips stay hydrated, especially during this really, really cold and dry season. I do use lip liners but not often. Recently I have been using it just because my sister gifted me some Lancome lip liners and it's nice to use lip liners because I tend to avoid using lipstick and I just put lip gloss on top. So lip liners is a nice way of putting a little definition on your lips. And now for my favorite step, this is the lip gloss or lip oils. I don't usually gravitate towards lipsticks. I just feel like it's a little more high maintenance and especially for work I prefer something easy to reapply. And so I have a bunch of lip products that I've been absolutely loving and they're all lip oils except for this buxom one so i have the elf lip oil the nyx lip oil and the clarence lip oil the queen of course is the clarence the doe foot is amazing the feel is amazing the smell is amazing this is by far the best lip oil out there and i just recently tried the elf and the nyx ones for this video i'm gonna try the elf one because i really want to see the color that it gives i love having nice plump soft shiny lips so I'll go ahead and put this little baby in my bag so that I can reapply it throughout the day. And my final step is setting spray. I only use setting spray when I feel like I need a little bit more moisture in my skin. And especially now it's winter time, it's a little bit dry, so I do like to put this on. But during the summer, I tend to steer clear of anything that's overly moisturizing or overly shiny. The two I've been using is the Tower 28 SOS spray and the Clarice Prime and Fine spray. I'm actually almost out of this, so I'm gonna use the Catrice. That's it. So this is how I tend to do my makeup every day. I do switch it up a little bit, but it's the same process. It's the same steps, the exact same steps. And at this point, I do start putting my jewelry on. I put some earrings, some necklaces, and then my perfume. So during the summertime, I completely have a different set of perfumes. It's just a different vibe. And for autumn and winter, it tends to be a little bit more gourmand. It tends to be a little bit more intense and rich, as opposed to the summer scents, which are more coconutty, which are more refreshing. I have an expensive option and I have a 
cheaper option. The cheaper option is Red Temptation Winter by Zara. I love the Red Temptation line, but Winter is my absolute favorite. The original Red Temptation is a little bit too strong for me, but the Winter is a little more subtle. It's beautiful. It smells great. My favorite perfume, and you can tell it's my favorite because I'm already half done with the bottle and I need to get a new one because I'm afraid they'll stop selling this. My second option is a higher end option, and this does not smell like the Red Temptation Winter by Zara, not at all, but I feel like it has the same vibe of the winter time, autumn. This is the Black Opium by YSL. I love this perfume. I did get a sample of this and I just kept smelling it and I loved it and I just had to get the big bottle. So right now I'm feeling the Zara. I'm gonna spray this on my skin. Two to three spritz should be enough. Now, if you want to know how this smells like, it does smell like Baccarat Rouge a little bit or Cloud by Ariana Grande. Was it Cloud? And what I love about this Zara perfume, it actually lasts a pretty long time on my skin, unlike other cheaper perfumes out there. So with the spritz of the perfume, I do feel complete and I feel like I'm ready to get on with my day. And it just gives me a nice outlook on how the day will go. So let me just pull down my hair and then off I go to work. Okay, my hair is a little crazy, but no matter, I have to go now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video a little helpful and fun. If you have any recommendations, please don't forget to leave them in the comments down below. Also feel free to check out my videos here 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 and here and give this a like ding that notification down below and subscribe if you haven't already i hope to see you in my next video bye